Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. From this few video onwards, I'm going to discuss on EMC standard. Okay, someone actually requests me to discuss on all these various EMC standards. So let's start the ball rolling. Let's start off by discussing the classification of the EMC consideration. Okay, so over here, you will be able to see that who is actually responsible for the EMC standard. This will be the part for the three series discussion on EMC consideration. If you're keen to know more about EMC consideration, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over this playlist, you will have a better idea what is EMC, why we bother to have EMC, why we need EMC, etc. etc. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Okay, let's understand, okay, before we even mention about all the standard, okay, let's do a very quick overview on the history of EMC before we actually mention why we need all these standards. Okay, German has the first EMC regulation in 1892. Okay, basically, which is the law of the telegraph in the German Empire. Okay, which deal with EMC disturbance on products and installation in the telegraph communication. Okay, so in the early days, German actually faced an issue on communication and therefore they need to have this EMC regulation in order to ensure that their communication actually still work. This become very essential okay, as a result of the discovery that communication cable could negatively affect each other. Defective electric lamp in London caused another light in the neighborhood to flicker. Okay, so basically these are more on the commercial and in order to curb this problem, probably the first EMC legalization by UK was intact called the Lightning Cross Act of 1899. Okay, so basically this is basically one of the commercial case. You can see that okay, because of EMC issue, okay, the electric lamp actually start to flicker, which means that they start to turn on and off and it become a real issue. And basically the UK has this law to ensure that everybody all abide by this rule here. Okay, the SCC has set the limitation on the amount of transmitter emission since 1938. Okay, so SCC is from US. They actually set the limitation. Okay, for example, you have unintentioned emission. How much will be the maximum? They actually set this particular standard. And they have continued to expand this rule in response to the explosion of the numbers of transmitter and electronics device. I guess all of us are whole responsible. We own more and more electronic device and we own more and more, for example, iPad, mobile phone, etc. So basically, these are all capable to transmit. And because the number is growing exponentially, therefore, this SEC set out a regulation okay, to prevent okay, anybody emit out extra, extraordinarily high and which can cause an interference to the neighboring device. Okay, the EMC directive was introduced in the EU in 1992, okay, which is to design to standardize requirement across the EU member country and free up the movement and electronics good. Okay, so later on, I will take a look on this again on the Europe okay, in order to understand all this. Okay, so now we are ready to discuss about EMC standard. So let's start by mentioning what are the classification of EMC standard. Okay, so there are five of them. The first one will be the international standard. Okay, so you are probably very familiar about ISO, IEC, CISPR. Okay, we also have this region standard. Okay, region standard, for example, we have Europe. Okay, we have Asia. Okay, basically all the region standard. Okay, like uh, later on, I will actually mention about all these standards. But at this moment, just uh, quickly quick go through these five different standards for EMC. 
Okay, we also have the national standard. Okay, for example, we have this Japan industry standard, we have this British standard, and we have this American National Standard Institute. We also have the industry standard okay, from this JEITA, okay, which is Electronics and Information Technologies Industry Association. Okay, we also have the form standard. Okay, so all these we I will go through one by one on the next few page. Firstly, let's understand on the international standard. Okay, the international standard are developed by the organizations that meet the commercial agreed principle of the World Trade Organization. Okay, which means that okay, this international standard basically are people that meet very regularly. Okay, they basically agree upon on the commercial based on the World Trade Organization. The World Standard Corporation, WSC, okay, was established in 2001 by the ITU, okay, International Telecommunication Union, the ISO, International Organization for Standardization, and also by IEC, International Electrotechnical Commission. Okay, so these three parties come together okay, to strengthen and advance the voluntary conscious-based international standard system okay, by, this by these three groups of people here. Okay, the WSC, okay, World Standard Corporation, okay, also promote the adoption and implementation of international conscious-based standard worldwide and resolve any outstanding issue regards cooperation in the technical work of the three organizations. So this WSC is basically harmonized the three organizations into one. So they will resolve any issue that bring up by any three party. Next, let's move on to region standard. Okay, so EN is from Europe and Asia here. So region standards are developed to ensure, okay, basically is to ensure that if you want to ship this thing into another country, you must ensure that you actually comply to this region standard. Okay, mainly is for trade. Okay, either you import and or export okay, from the relevant region. Okay, for example, the EN standard is a typical example. The EU market has been forced to comply with EMC directive since Jan 1996. The EMC directive provides for a requirement called mandatory requirement, which means that you must pass all the tests before you can ship into Europe okay, for each product area. Okay, product that compliant with the requirement of the directive are allowed to be freely distributed within the EU, which means that you can sell freely in EU, but you must ensure that you actually compliant to their requirement. Okay, the requirement of the EMC directive are not detailed technical requirement, but rather okay, define that the product must meet the essential requirement for EMC. So over here you can see that Europe basically from this. CE group. Okay, so before you can actually ship the product into Europe, you must ensure you actually comply to the requirement okay, from this group of people. So basically, these are all the different region standards. Okay, all areas, for example, Europe, ASEAN, they have this region standard. So this is basically after the international standard, we have this region standard. Next, we have this national standard. Okay, so this is basically, you can see that it's a collective of Europe country, collective of Asia country. But over here, the national standard okay, represent just one country, Japan, British. Okay, the national standard are established when a country need to have customized standard that suit the actual situation in the country. So basically, you can see over here, okay, basically it's just a country. Okay, so rather than early on, the region is basically a collective of Europe collective of Asia, okay, but over here, basically mainly just for one country itself. Such national standard may be incorporated in laws and regulation and operate along with penalties. Okay, so for example, if you ship into a certain country, let's say US, okay, they actually have some regulation. So basically they have enforced by law. So if you break this rule, okay, you may have liability to a lot of punishment or from the industry, etc. But over here, you can see that all this standard is basically governed by a single country like Japan, British, and America. Next, let's move on to the industry standard. Industry standard may define codes and standards for issue 
such as interconnectivity between devices. Okay, usually these codes are standard that do not involve legal action. Okay, for example, okay, we want to connect device. Okay, so we all of us all build different brands of device. Okay, for example, we want to build Bluetooth, for example, for this case here. Okay, so in order to compliant or maybe for these two different devices made by two different companies in order to work, okay, we need to have this industry standard. The industry standard basically define all the standard code. For example, how you communicate all the protocol is defined by this industry standard. So therefore, the two Bluetooth devices will be able to communicate. So basically, this is a form called an industry standard. Basically, it will be a collective effort uh, to form this kind of standard, etc. Okay, next, last but not least, we have this form standard. Okay, so this form standard is basically target a particular technology or some, for example, for this case, some connectivity. For example, okay, it can be on Bluetooth and also maybe USB. Okay, you can see that the connector, okay, on the USB part, let's say on a USB jack, basically how, how does the dimension, everything is all defined. So this is basically on the form standard. Okay, let's quickly do a quick revisit on the five. So I have mentioned the classification of EMC standard. Firstly, will be on the international standard. So basically, this group of people meet regularly. So they stand upon and represent the World Trade Organization okay, to implement all this EMC standard for the benefit of everyone. Region standard, okay, they normally represent a larger area. For example, Europe or Asia, okay, they actually represent a larger area as compared to national standard. National standard purely just for one country. Industry standard, okay, basically, as I mentioned earlier on, okay, in order for device, different device to talk to each other, okay, we need to have a certain protocol so that they will be able to understand each other. So basically, we need to have this industry standard in order to establish the link. And then last but not least, we have this form standard. Okay, so this form standard, if you can imagine, is basically just a, uh, for example, LP1 LoRa. Okay, they basically form this LoRa alliance. So this can be a so-called like a form standard. Okay, basically all these are governed by SEMTEC okay, on the LoRa Alliance. So with this, i like to end my discussion. Guys, I appreciate that you can help this video by like and also subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for a strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. See you.